Okay, cool. So I am just going to do a really quick run through of how to do foliage in Maya and how to take it into Unreal Engine and set it all up. Um, I will potentially cover the foliage tool as well, depending on how late it gets. It's actually not that late. Yeah, we'll we'll do the foliage tool as well. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me, one of many. Uh, first things first, what we need to do is, uh, I should probably show you what it looks like actually. So, this is the outcome that we're going for, is some foliage that kind of looks like this. This is some stuff I did for my master's degree. Um, and I made a bunch of foliage as you can see, it's all hand painted. Um, so the way that we light it in Unreal is slightly different, but I will run through that after. I might not even tell you about it because it'll just confuse you. Um, but yeah, so what we want is something that looks kind of like this. So how do we get to this stage? First things first, you're going to need a texture sheet, which is a lot different from um, all the things that we've done previously because previously we make the model, then we make the textures. Um, for this one, you make the textures, then you make the model. So this is a perfect example of a terrible UV sheet because it's not making very good use of the space. Um, when I was doing my masters, I had the intention of making a lot more different sort of foliage and trees and everything, and I sort of ran out of time. Um, and I just didn't get round to changing the texture sheet because that meant I would have had to have changed everything up until that point. Um, so yeah, I don't recommend that yours looks like this. Your Ideally, you want your texture sheet to be something like this. You know, like everything filling out the space as much as you can. Uh, but yeah, so the what I've done here is I've got my background colour which kind of matches the leaves and everything. Um, I've then got my foliage things on another thing. Uh, colours I used to paint it, we don't need that. Uh, hue and saturation, I don't think I needed that on. Cool, so these are just some alterations that I really poor, really bad alterations I made um, because I didn't want green foliage, but I didn't know how to paint purple leaves it there was method in this madness trust me like I painted them green then I altered the hues to them to fit the actual thing I needed um, and then I made them into this sort of thing and then blew out the entire way that it looks inside uh, Unreal Engine anyway um, so yeah so this was the sort of outcome that we had with it uh, so made my foliage what I then did was I made an alpha sheet. So if I turn all of this off, you could just see this is alpha. To do that, we know how to do that. We come to our layers. We come to the bit that has our pieces on. It would help if I did this. Come to the one that has our things on. Press control and click the actual little square. And that selects everything that's painted on that. And then we just make a new alpha layer. And then I have saved this out as a PNG or a targa. I believe I've saved mine as a targa. Let me just double check. Is this one a TGA file? Yeah, so I saved mine out as targas. Um, I think that's because when I take it into Maya, Maya prefers targas. It recognizes the opacity on targa files rather than PNGs. Um, that might have changed now with the updates. I'm still using 2018. Um, but at the time I did these, it had to be targa files. When you save it out as a targa, uh, save as, do this again just to show you. Uh, it will ask you, do you want it to be 16, 24 or 32? Make sure it's 32, the highest number. Um, otherwise it just won't work for some reason. I couldn't explain it to you, but yeah. <coughs> so once you have done that, check my phone, nothing important. Uh, we are going to come into Maya. So our goal here 
is to make something that looks like this, like a little, like a little bush. I made quite a few of them. Uh, that guy out the way. This guy. So as you can see, I've got quite a few um, foliage in here. They're not amazing. They're not great. I didn't put a lot of detail into the little grassy things because, again, looking at the scene, most of it was in the background and it's not that great now that I look at it, but, you know, it's fine. It serves its purpose. So what we are going to do, just highlight these to a sec. Uh, imagine we can't see that one, actually. So what we're going to do is we need to make our material inside Maya. Now, to do that super quick, I just make a cube, right click and assign a new material by here. I'm going to make a uh, Lambert. I'm going to name it. So click on Lambert 7. I'm going to name it Foliage uh, Class because I've already made a test. So we call it Foliage Class. Um, so when we change the color of Foliage Class, um, yeah, it'll change down here, but what we need to do is go from color to a file. And then we need to find our target that we've done. So the difference between a PNG and a target here is that the PNG uh, won't show the opacity. We'd have to go into um, uh, Hypershade. You have to go into Hypershade to do... Um, PNGs and I can't be bothered to be hooking it up. Whereas if we use a Targa, it recognizes the opacity straight away, which is quite nice. Uh, so we're just going to open that. And as you can see, that cube now has foliage class on it. Um, that's literally just so that I can make the um, material without opening Hypershade because I can't be bothered to do that. So what we do now, I'm just going to make a little plane. going to scale it up. I'm going to drop this down to like three and then this to two. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to apply the foliage class to it. So I open up my UV edit in now. So as we can see, this has now applied it to the entirety of it, but we don't want it on everything. We just want it on here. So this is really easy to do. We're just going to UV shell. And we're going to do this. I want these to be like this. So we're just going to do this. And we're going to resize it. And this will make sense and it will look good in a moment. I promise. So with it like that, you can see over here, it doesn't look great. So we are going to object mode. Just going to scale it so that it sort of fits the right thing. Scale it down if we need. Um, once we've got like a basic outline of it. And what we can do now is um, taking our vertex and whatever. So we know we need to sort of bring this in a bit. It's going to skew our UVs, but we know sort of where we can put it. So this, this will make sense in a moment. I promise. So this is just my way of of doing foliage again there are probably other ways uh better ways of doing it but you know with that we'll come over here and we'll control u can scale it down and yeah cool just making sure that we've got it like that and these bits can probably come in a little bit like so. Control U, rotate it slightly, move it slightly. Cool. So we've we've kind of got this thing that we want. Um, and when we click off it, yeah, happy. I'm happy with that make it a bit fatter if we want. Fun, cool. <coughs> oh, excuse me. 
cool. So, <clears throat> gosh, excuse me. With this um, on here now, what I might do actually is take these and move them this way a little bit. just makes makes it look a bit nicer and what I can then do so well, I'm happy with that I'm yeah I'm not gonna do much more with that I'm gonna come back to standard and I'm gonna vertex select these I'm gonna bring them up slightly <coughs> gosh I'm sorry I'm struggling with my voice today um, so the reason that I've given that a little bit of a, a raised Thing to it instead of keeping it flat is that if we look at this from you know directly on the side if it was a plane it would disappear whereas if it's like that and we look at it from the side where is it texture yes it's very difficult to sort of see what I mean but you can actually see it on here so it doesn't just disappear when you look at it from the side is my point Cool, so I'm quite happy with that. I'm now going to move my pivot to here. And I'm going to rotate it. Uh, like this. Put it up. Probably a little bit more. Cool, and I'll put one here. Control D. Put one here. Control D. Put one here. Scale this one down, and all I'm doing is just making a little bush from it. So D, E. Uh, I think I'm gonna combine these guys first so that I can do it like this. Cool, fab. I'm happy with that. Uh, might want to put a couple of little ones down the bottom, but for this uh, example, I am completely fine with that combine that and very important I'm going to put my pivot point at the bottom and I'm going to put it to zero we can drag it to zero or we can just put this to zero over here um, that just means that we're in world zero Nice, cool. So this is going to look awful on the back because obviously it's just giving us black on the back. Again, we can fix that if we go into the hypershade menu, but just for building our foliage, I'm not too worried about it right now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this. Um, obviously, you may want to make uh, trees um, better looking things than this. You know, it, it's exactly the same sort of principle. Um, the trunk wouldn't need to have a uh, alpha map or anything. You could just put a tiling texture on it. Um, yeah, that's kind of self-explanatory. And then the branches, you'd do this. So, <coughs> gosh, excuse me. I'm gonna call this uh, test bush. I'm gonna export it. I'm just going to put it on the desktop for now. No, I'm not, because that might cause issues. I'm going to put it in. Um, oh my gosh, there's just so much. There's just so much. Yeah, in here is fine. I'm going to call it Test Bush. And I have done something wrong, haven't I? Why is that in there? What did I do wrong? Okay, can't be bothered to, to figure out what I'm doing wrong. I'm probably just being an idiot here. But you would export this out as an FBX and that is going to give you something that looks like this. It's a good job I did this earlier. Uh, where is it? Where is it? The Arcana FBX foliage. Uh, cool. 
It's probably called Bush 2, isn't it? Probably. Cool. Anyway. So, in Unreal then, what we're going to do is I'm going to take this. So, you'd save it out as a FBX, 3D object, whatever you want to save it out as. I'm just going to call this Bush 3. Uh, actually, no. I think this is the same version as what I've just made. So yeah, I'm just going to duplicate that and I'm going to call it Bush 3. Lovely. And I'm going to drag this in. Fabulous. I'm going to close that. Uh, right, cool. So we want, where is it? Create a new material. So imagine that this isn't here. This is called Lambert 2. This this was shoddy work on my behalf. It was just, yeah, get it in as quickly as possible. Um, name your materials properly. So in theory, this will bring in, oh, this will still bring in Lambert 2. So I'm going to make a new, uh, okay, I'm going to make a new um, folder a sec because I don't want to mess up what I've already got here. Just so I can show you what the heck I'm on about right now. I've closed it, didn't I? Cool. Right. I need to go to, gosh, this, 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 this. And this, right. Bush three. We got there eventually. Right, I'm gonna bring this in. And I'm gonna close this. Fab. So we need uh to create new materials. We wanna import our textures. The only way we can untick this is that if we put do not create material and then don't bring the textures, but we want it to. And I think think absolutely everything else is fine. Just gonna press import. Cool. Uh, we had a clash name. That's that's fine. It doesn't matter. So by default, we're gonna look at this, and it's not gonna be working. Okay. So here's our static mesh. If I drag it into the scene, you see it's kind of there, but uh it's not really working so we need to fix that which is fine uh, I'm going to open up this uh, please thank you so uh, first things first I'm going to delete the second one we don't need the second one because we can just plug our alpha into this um, we're going to plug it into opacity mask rather than opacity and we're going to change our uh, texture thing here. Uh, by default, it's going to go to translucent. I feel that is because we've added a target to it and it's recognizing there is transparency when it comes from Maya. Uh, we just want to change this to masked. Um, something else I like is we'll change it to two-sided. Uh, so that means no matter which side of the globe thing you're looking at, um, you'll be able to see it. And one final thing I like to do, um, specifically for uh, my workflow, because I use hand painted textures, is that I create a constant by holding down one and just clicking. That's how you make constants or a numeric value or something. Um, I plug it into the roughness and then I change it to one because I don't want it to have any lighting on it. See right now it's oops, when it first, when you first look at it, when it's zero, when it decides to load up, it's really shiny. Um, I know there's not enough on there, whether you can see it or not. Yeah. So you see that's kind of like shining and we don't want it to do that. I want it to be nice and matte. So I press that, wait for this to catch up and then, yeah. Fabulous. Cool. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to press save and then wait for it to catch up. Lovely. Minimize it and then we look at this lovely bush that we have here 
and it's got the textures on it. Um, again, it looks slightly different to how it should inside Maya and whatever. That's because I've got some weird post processing stuff going on inside uh, Unreal Engine. Um, but yeah, this is this is kind of how you do it basically. Um, and and yeah, that's that's pretty much that. Um, so that's how you create foliage for a start and again you can apply it to absolutely anything whether it's a bush whether it's ivy whether it's like um, I don't know if you can see it but in here we've got little uh, floating leaves these guys um, that's particle effect which I can't click because it's particles um, that's using the same sort of technique as this um, so yeah but uh, all of this stuff here a lot of these are static meshes I've placed in if we click the grass you can see the grass is actually um, one object now when we come to this you can see that they're actually not one object at all they are all separate so why is this happening <coughs> I will show you so what we're gonna do click off that uh, I'm going to come up here to modes and I'm going to click the little arrow next to it and I'm going to come to foliage. You can press shift 3 if you want to. Um, so yeah, if you ever end up pressing uh, shift and something and you end up in a weird thing like this, it's just because, you know, you've pressed something accidentally perhaps. Um, but yeah, so when we come into the foliage tool, this is what we get. Um, it just opens up an extra window here and then changes some things along the top. So to explain this to you, uh, what we need to do, we're going to take our static mesh of the bush that we just made and we're going to drag it up here. Okay. That's then going to say, okay, usually it'll ask you where to save it because I've already set up a path for it to save. It's automatically saved it with the other ones. Um, so by default, you won't have any of these selected. These are just the different types of foliage that you can have that we've made, that we've dragged in. Um, the little number next to them is how many you have in your scene. So if I painted a bunch in, uh, obviously our shaders are going to start compiling. But you see that number going up is because I'm painting them in there. So that's a good way of seeing how many you have in there. Uh, so I have 2,000, oh no, 2.28k. I don't know what that means. 2,280,000? No. Numbers, okay, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of grass. Anyway, so basically all you need to do is uh, make sure this is ticked. When you click onto it, you're going to get a bunch of um, different options down here. Uh, density, you can change. So you can see that's painting them in. It's not super dense. You can see there's like gaps between them. If I bump this up, there's no gaps between them. And you can see I've, I've painted in 1,400. It's quite a lot in this little space. Uh, so we'll keep that there. Uh, radius, I'm not going to change. Scaling, so scaling is uniform. You can change this. So you can have free scaling. Um, so that just basically means, is it going to be the same size when you paint it? I like to um, change the scale here. I think X is the one I want to do. And I just make this slightly smaller. This one's slightly bigger. So this is quite drastic change but you can see now that we're getting some um, sorry, I'm looking for irregularity in the sizes of the foliage so you know we can get away with using the same um, same foliage actor, same asset to get sort of different results without having to manually scale it ourselves. Uh, what we can also do yeah, we don't want to worry about that. Uh, offset, align to normal, and 
random yours. So basically, if we look over here, I've used the landscape tool to just block in some space. If I paint this, with this brush, it's not too bad. It's not going to look weird. Um, they're sticking out at the angle, so they basically follow the angle of the landscape. Um, with the bush, not too bad. If you could imagine this was a tree and you had your tree sticking out in this direction, that would look really weird. So to do that, we just, I believe, we turn on a line to normal. Let me just double check. Yeah, so you see they're now growing. Uh, that one still looks kind of weird, but it, you know, they're, they're more upright. If I zoom in. No, actually, yeah, that is growing straight up. Yeah, so that is now going up, and that is what you'd want to do with your trees. Um, but everything you do to this one won't happen to anything else. So if we look at our... We've got Align to Normal switched off on this one. If we come over here and tick this one on, Align to Normal is still on. So you can you can change them um, however you want, depending on what it is you want to do, the desired outcome. Um, so... If, for example, then you have painted in a bunch of foliage to make the thing bigger, you use the um, the squiggly brackets. I'm not sure what they're called. They look like sideways mustaches. Um, you use those to paint in. I think it's the same in Photoshop and ZBrush to scale your brushes. Um, so yeah, for example, we've painted in this. We're happy with it. Lovely. Um, how do we delete this? So we can go to Erase. Erase would delete everything within the size or everything within the little uh, dome that we have. Um, again, that's only going to affect what we have here. So say I had these two and I painted them in. You could paint different types of foliage at the same time as well, which is super useful. Um, and then I only want to delete the grass from it. We just tick that off, go to Erase and erase the grass. Uh, get rid of it all. There we go. Lovely, lovely. So that's how you erase. Um, fill. I have not used the fill tool and this is potentially going to break my PC so we won't do that. Um, I assume, we'll try that at the end, but I assume it's just going to fill the entire landscape with grass. Seems dangerous so we won't. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, fab. So turn that one off, put this one back on. Uh, what we can do is place single instances of it. So does this like that. Um, the benefit of doing it single is for more control. So say we were dressing the scene here. Uh, minus that one there. And you didn't want to just grab your paint and try and get, you know, if I make this brush smaller a sec. Say now we, we knew we wanted to place a, a bush here. Instead of pressing the paint tool and trying to redo it over and over and over, we can just press single and click it. Like so. Uh, what we can do as well is uh, come to select. And we can select individual instances of this. We can move them, we can change them if we need to. Uh, we can lasso. Doesn't work the way I thought it worked. I very rarely use the lasso to tool. So. Uh, all. Okay, deselect. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay, lasso makes sense actually. So yeah, you just paint over it to select them rather than deleting them or whatever. That's interesting. Um, what else do I need to show you? Uh, actually, you know what? I think that's pretty much it. I don't know what that means. I've never had to use that. Reapply current settings to foliage instances. Mm, I think if you make changes in here, it'll re change it, the ones that already exist. Um, Move the selected foliage to the current level. You don't need to necessarily worry about that. If you're using different levels in here, that might help. Um, but other than that, yeah, wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, ah, so 
what I would like to talk about very quickly is uh, why do we not just put them as static meshes into the scene? Um, so if I come out of this a second, come to select. So a bunch of these I've done as static mesh. Um, I I did that. They they're not very high poly. I think they have like sixteen polys per bush because they are just two planes next to each other. They look they look quite detailed, but they're literally just X's. Like if I zoom in on this. You can see it's just two planes together with opacity on it. So actually that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think they're eight verts, so they they're really low poly. They're two two faces basically. Um but they, they look quite decent when I put a bunch of them in there. Um, I placed those because I was very particular based on the concept art I was following and using the foliage tool was just taking longer than I needed it to take. Um, but the grass is all using the foliage tool. The reason I haven't placed the grass as static meshes is because one, that would have taken absolutely forever and two, I believe the reason behind it is that Unreal Engine um, will render each grass piece individually as like one thing if it was static meshes and that would take absolutely forever. It'd have to build the shaders for all of it and it would just take forever. Whereas when it is foliage, it builds it all as one object at the same time. Um, it's, ju it's just quicker and it's easier to sort of manage. Um, I believe that's that's the reason behind it. That's that's what I've always thought. Um, and it's it's just better to use the foliage tool in general, especially when placing lots and lots and lots of them. Um, that's the main thing I wanted to cover with this. Uh, don't think there was anything else to do with foliage that I needed to cover. Um, as always, make sure you are keeping your folder structure nice and neat. Um, like I said, this was from a few years ago, so it's it's not ideal. I don't know what this is. I don't know why there's a lamp but one in the levels. So so yeah, make sure you're keeping your levels nice and nice and neat um, and whatever. And something I think I may show you at some point is the sequencer. I'll show you how to do cool little cutscenes that fly through like this. Uh, we may do something like that for this project. It, it depends. It depends if you guys want something like this. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions let me know. Um, I apologize for the state of my voice. I've just had this cough all weekend. It's not Covid but it it sucks. Um, so yeah, sorry if I sound a bit rough, but yeah, if you need anything, let me know, um, and I hope that made sense.